Hey folks, this is Jay Davis with my third and hopefully final video of the day unless I watch a movie later tonight and decide to shoot a quick video before I go to bed, um, uh, which is possible. Um, this is, uh, goodness gracious, I don't know, uh, I sit? A uh, volume of my ranking every best picture, I say one, two, three, four, five, yeah, sits. Since I'm, uh, uh, volume six of nine, so, heck, man, I'm really getting through it. Got, um, uh, just three more decades after this, plus, you know, the tail end of the 20s there. Uh, got some Sitsies music on in the background, because that's what we're talking about today, the 1960s, the Best Picture winners from 1960 to 1969, ranking them based on my personal picks and other info on the way. Number 10. Tom Jones from 1963, directed by Tony Richardson, starring Albert Finney, Susanna York, Lynn Redgrave, Julian Glover, David Warner, and Hugh Griffith. Uh, this is the story, uh, this movie also won the Oscars for Best Director, Adapted Screenplay, and Original Score. Bring that back. Bring that movie here. Uh... <laughs> The um, uh, whole story of this movie, is, uh, Albert Finney plays Tom Jones, who is a rich kid, Lothario. Uh, and it's basically just him going around, awesome movie, uh, going around uh, better than Tom freaking Jones, uh, pretty much trying to bang anything that he sees. Uh, and like literally everyone he meets that he's not trying to nail is trying to, you know, <clears throat> cock block him, waiting for my kid to leave him. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, I just hated this movie, just so repetitive. It felt like watching, uh, a character on SNL and just binge watching all of their, all of their sketches in a row. I did, I've never liked this movie. It's really boring. It's super repetitive, and it's just, I just not. It's not funny. It's frustratingly not funny. Uh, it, which is a shame because Albert Finney is great, and this is a movie that made him a movie star. So when I finally got a chance to go back and sit down and watch it, I was I was really really disappointed in this movie. I say Lilies of the Field should have won. Number nine, Oliver, from 1968, directed by Carol Reed, starring Mark Lester, Oliver Reed, Ron Moody, Shani Wall Wallace, uh, Jake Wilde, and Hugh Griffith. This movie also won the Oscars for director, original, or adapted score. Just the crazy music stuff they're doing there for the 50s era. Art direction and sound. Uh, this uh, this movie is, is a musical uh, reimagining of... Uh, of uh, Charles Dickens Oliver Twist which you know which should be required reading if you're a kid you know I read it when I was a kid I think when I was maybe 10 years old maybe a little older it was great you know it's, it's you, should, you should read it when you're a kid well if you're a kid you shouldn't be watching my videos you know anyhow <laughs> you have your kids read Oliver Twist okay Anyhow, um, this is just, uh, not that good of a movie. I mean, it's, it's, the story is fine, it's all the twist. But, you know, it just, it didn't need songs. <laughs> it didn't need to be three hours long. Uh, what really keeps, uh, the, what really hurts the movie the most are the songs aren't particularly memorable or good. I don't really care for the songs. <laughs> and over, overall, a lot of the movie, especially the interior sets, uh, really feel like just big movie sets. Uh, the outside of London and everything, skylines and the mucky streets, all that kind of stuff was great. And, oh, you know, Oliver Reed is, you know, as magnificent as Bill Sykes. He's almost worth the price of admission. But, uh, you know, it's just it's a movie that I never really cared for. It don't really, uh, doesn't do much for me. In the era of was when musicals were at their most overrated and most oversaturated, uh, it really stands out as one of those ones that just, just why did this get all this love and appreciation? There's really not a lot going for it. Uh, I say... Definitely, Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet should have won Best Picture. It's one of the best uh, Shakespeare adaptations ever, if not the. Number eight, 
West Side Story from 1961, directed by Robert Wise, and officially co-directed by uh, Jerome Robinson, but I guess he was really just like the choreographer. <laughs> this movie stars Nallie Wood, Richard Bamer, Russ Tamblin, George Shakiris, and uh, Rita Moreno. This movie uh, also won the Oscars for director, sporting actor, sporting actress, musical score, cinematography, art direction, and costume design all in color, of course, because this one they're splitting up color in black and white, uh, and film editing and sound. Sweet Lord. Uh, it's, uh, again, mu modern day musical reimagining of Romeo and Juliet uh, set in uh, New York City. And that is kind of the problem they shot it in New York City. It's kind of a good experiment for the time, I'm sure. And I liked it well enough when I was a kid, but when we revisit it as an adult, it just ugh, felt really cringy and dated. I've never liked George Shakiris in this. Uh, Rita Marino and Nally Wood are great. Uh, I, I love them both. They're just wonderful in it. And Rita Marino, uh, specifically, she's, uh, I think they call it the EGOT, where you bait, where uh, people have won uh, an, an Emmy, a Grammy, uh, a Tony, and an Oscar. All for the same performance. All for the same role. Uh, but yeah, I just, I'm not, it's not bad. At least it's unlike Oliver, it's got memorable songs. Uh, a lot of really memorable songs. And Russ Tamlin's great too, by the way. But yeah, it's just, uh, it doesn't age well, as far as I'm concerned. I think uh, the Guns of Navarone should have won. Down. Number seven, The Sound of Music from 1965, directed by Robert Weiss, starring Julie Andrews, Christopher Plummer, and Nicholas Hammond. Uh, this movie uh, is al also won the Oscars for Best Director, Musical Score, Film Editing, and Sound. Uh, now, from here forward, I actually think the movie that won should have won. Uh, for the most part, in most of these cases, I believe. But I was nominated. Yeah, The Sound of Music should have won. The whole story here is, uh, take place during World War II. Uh, Julie Andrews plays a nun who leaves to help a, uh, a, a soldier who, uh, an officer in the military who's, uh, widowed, and he's, he's a widower, and he's got a, a shit ton of children. <laughs> and she's basically moving into his huge mansion to help him. Uh, with these kids. <laughs> and of course, the impending, uh, impending, um, uh, uh, pressure of, you know, World War II and the fact that they're surrounded by the Third Reich is all just great, uh, uh, intensity building stuff. The songs are fine, the movie, I do think the movie is long, but it looks great. It really does. Um, Jill Andrews terrific in it, and Christopher Plummer is phenomenal in this movie. It's really great in this. Uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's not one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's not one of my favorite movies from the 60s, or even one of my favorite musicals, but I think, I mean, for what it was, it was so huge. It's still beloved to this day. It ended, uh, it ended, uh, uh the Gone with the Wind's nearly 30-year run at the, as the number one movie of all time. It was, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal in the history of movies. And, yeah, so, yeah, it should have won a Best Picture. And it's a good movie. Uh, but, uh, and out of what was nominated, uh, my runner-up would be Dr. Zhivago. And I think it's really overrated. It's a beautiful film, sure, but it's very long and kind of one-dimensional in a lot of ways. Uh, <clears throat> my favorite movie from 1965 is Thunderball. <laughs> Number six is A Man for All Seasons from 1966, directed by Fred Zinneman, starring uh, Paul Schofield, Robert Shaw, Wendy Hiller, Susanna York, Nigel Davenport, John Hurt, and Orson Welles. This movie also won the Oscars for director, actor, adapted screenplay, cinematography, and costume design color category. Uh, this is the story of Sir Thomas More basically standing up against Henry VIII, who wants to go against the Catholic Church, or actually uh, separate the crown from the ch Catholic Church in order to divorce his wife. Uh, and of course, if you know your history, you know that this this whole incident kind of resulted in a bit of a reign of terror from uh, Henry VIII. Many people were beheaded. 
executed, including his ex-wife and Sir Thomas More. And it's just a gripping, gripping thriller that's brilliantly uh, directed by Fred Zinnemann and amazing performances from Rock, from uh, Paul Schofield and especially Robert Shaw. And it's, yeah, it's, just, it's a great movie. It's a really, really great movie. But I should point out, 1966, uh, I can't remember all four of them off the top of my head right now, but there were no bad movies nominated for Best Picture that year. I My runner-up would have been, maybe even my pick for Best Picture, would have been Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. It's a very, very unique movie uh, that people have tried and failed to recreate the magic of many, many times over the last 55 years. Uh, and it's just great to see that without any big sets or fancy costumes or poetic dialogue, just playing characters in front of a camera, what magnanimous movie stars like Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor really were. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great movie. Um, number five, top five now. All right, The Apartment from 1960, directed by Billy Wilder, starring Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, Fred uh, McMurray, Ray Walston, Edie Adams, and Jack Crucian. This movie also won the Oscars for director, original screenplay, art direction, and uh, black and white, and film editing. Uh, the whole story here is Jack Lemmon is CCA ba Baxter, who is an ambitious uh, young businessman who basically has been, since he lives alone, he's a bachelor in New York, he ba he's okay. been lend lending out his apartment at night and on the weekends to married men in his office to bring their uh, mistresses that they're hiding from their wives. Uh, and, you know, it's it's death, desperate and, and it's pathetic, but things get complicated when a girl, after getting dumped, tries to kill herself in his apartment and he nurses her back to health and they kind of really uh, develop a bond and a romance. It's a very touching movie. It's a very funny movie. And I've heard people say that no comedy has ever won Best Picture, which is just absolutely absurd to me. I think I may even mention this in my 70s one, but, you know, Annie Hall, Shakespeare in Love, uh, The Apartment. These are these are comedies, blatant comedies. Uh, but, yeah, uh, The Apartment's a wonderful movie, a great performance from Jack Lemmon. Nobody was a better comedic actor than Jack Lemmon because not only was he infectiously funny, but he was also able to pull such pathos and empathy. He was never just a guy uh, uh, hitting a a one-liner or doing a, a silly shtick. It was always playing a character. It was always a dude underneath whatever wackiness you saw him. I mean, you think of his performances specifically in this, as in some Pulver, as uh, uh, Felix Unger. Just uh, a lot of a lot of pain comes through these very, very funny films and very funny characters. Uh, yeah, Jack London's amazing. He's actually probably one of my favorite actors. Uh, if I actually were to sit back and and be honest with you. He's definitely my favorite comedic actor ever. Um, my runner-up would have been The Alamo. I think The Alamo is a little too hokey, a little too long, a little too racist. <laughs> it's, it's a bit racist. It's a touch racist. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I know. It's it's a big, epic movie. Uh, but, yeah, right movie one. The Apartment should have won. Number four, uh, I'm actually surprised I had it up here because I shit so much on the other musicals. Uh, thought so little of them, most except for Sound of Music. But my number four is My Fair Lady for, uh, from 1964, directed by George Cukor. This song's f from the 70s, not the 60s. This is false advertisement. And this video is probably from the 90s. Uh, <laughs> directed by George Cukor, starring Audrey Hepburn, J Rhett Harrison, Stanley Holloway, Wilfred Hyde White and Gladys Cooper. Excuse me. I feel like I had to sneeze here. Movie also won Oscars for director, actor, musical score, cinematography, art direction, and costume, all in the color categories, as well as best sound. Uh, this is uh, based on the play Pygmalion, which is the story of uh, linguistics professor Henry Higgins. Or is it linguist or is it something else? God damn it. I really feel like I need to sneeze. But, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, um, Henry Higgins makes a bet with an old friend that he could basically take a flower girl, a gutter snipe, uh, a poorest chick he could find, most low-class girl he could find, 
and present her in front of high society as a proper lady and trick everybody. Uh, and that's that's the story. He succeeds. Um, uh, he absolutely comes to adore her, and they become have a strong relationship. I mean, it's, if he is a romantic, is it more of a father daughter kind of thing? It's it's a relationship. You know, it's depending on which version you're watching, depending on the age difference, really, <laughs> of the actors playing him. But it's just wonderful. Audrey Hepburn's ad adorable in it. Red Harrison is absolutely infectious, mesmerizing in this role. Brilliant. It's long, but it's great. Very funny. Uh, really charming, entertaining. Well done songs, musical numbers. Uh, I want to point out for all they're patting themselves on the back over every single time they even show the slightest attention towards any kind of minority group. This is 1964, but right even before the big civil rights movement was really taken off even... And Hollywood was giving an Oscar for Best Director to an openly gay man and George Cukor. So, I mean, I always kind of wonder if, they, you know, I mean, you know, things are are bad now. I mean, it takes, I mean, you always have to wonder if things were as bad as people say. Because even look at things now. Uh, never mind, I'm going to get my video pulled. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Just focus on the movie, straight. Uh, 1967, directed by George... Uh, Number three is In the Heat of the Night from 1967, directed by George... Her uh, Norman Jewison, and starring Sidney Poitier, Rod Steiger, Warren Oates, Scott Wilson, and Lee Grant. It also won the Oscars for director, adapted screenplay, film editing, and sound. Real quick, I uh, forgot to say... I, as much as I thought Mar My Fair Lady's wonderful, uh, I still think Dr. Strangelove should have won. Or, How I Learned to Stop Whoring and Love the Bomb. Um, in the Heat of the Night is a story of a, a, a big city black detective kind of gets roped just while passing through a small southern town, kind of gets wrapped into this uh, murder investigation of a wealthy white man. Uh, lots of clashes, um, but being around these, these southern people also kind of brings his own bigotries to the surface, and, you know, he learns about himself, too, and it's all this, you know, important kind of social character stuff, but the focus is the murder mystery, who killed the cracker? <laughs> and it's, you know, it's a great movie, some of the best back and forth stuff uh, between actors you're ever likely to see between Steiger and Portier and you know I may have pointed this out and talked about Oscar videos before we were talking about great Oscar robberies this movie was also the same year as uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and the fact that Sidney Portier was not nominated for an Oscar for either one of these movies is just preposterous bring me that Uh, I think In the Heat of Night should have won Best Picture, uh, but I think the, uh, um, bring me that. <laughs> but I think, uh, my, my runner-up would have been Bonnie and Clyde. Number two, Midnight Cowboy from 1968, directed by John Schlesinger, starring John Voight, Dustin Hoffman, Bernard Hughes, and Sylvia Miles. Uh, this movie also won the Oscars for director and adapted screenplay. Uh, this is a story of uh, a, a foolish, naive Texas kid figures he's going to move to New York City and become a male prostitute because he's just so pretty. Um, of course, things go really bad really fast and just get worse from there for him. He becomes, he befriends this hustler named Ratso Rizzo, played by Dustin Hoffman. And, you know, just pretty much anything you can imagine. That they almost starve to death. They almost freeze to death. They end up homeless. They got to sell everything they own. That's to pull gay tricks. It's just, I mean, awful. Awful experiences guys go through. And it's, well, and the fact that the movie is these two. You got Ratso Rizzo, who is incredibly bitter and sarcastic, smartass. And Joe Buck, who is this hopelessly naive enthusiastic idiot and the whole soundtrack is this really 
kind of bubbly pop sound. It gives the whole movie a very, very melancholy feel. It's a just a great film. It is a great, great movie. My favorite scene of the whole movie is Joe Buck's upstairs pulling a trick. Rats goes downstairs on the sidewalk waiting for him. And kind of looks down at his shoes. And, like, we see him, like, all of a sudden he's on the beach with his sand, toes in the sand. Just imagine himself anywhere but here kind of thing. You know, it's really a, a wonderfully made movie. Uh, it absolutely should have won Best Picture. But I'd say my runner-up would have been uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. One more quick thing. Midnight Cowboy is the only X-rated movie to ever win Best Picture. And my number one Best Picture of the of the 1960s is easily Lawrence of Arabia from 1962 directed by David Lean starring uh, Peter O'Toole Anthony Quinn Omar Sharif Alec Guinness Jack Hawkins Arthur Kennedy Claude Rains Anthony Quayle and Jose Farrar this movie also won the Oscars for director original score cinematography art direction both in the colored categories film editing and sound uh, this is the story of political, uh, of, um, I'm sorry, military strategist T.E. Lawrence, who, quite frankly, say what you want about British imperialism, for the most part, I'll, I, I'll, I'd agree with a lot of it, <laughs> but, I mean, this man was a, was a brilliant strategist, a brilliant military mind, how could you say he was anything else, he went out there, he did, people said, you can't go out there, you cannot unite these tribes to fight on our behalf, with the British Empire, uh, and he did it. Uh, they told him this was impossible in the hundreds of years. No one's been able to fucking come to an agreement to an alliance with these folks, and he did it. Uh, and it's yeah, it's great. It's magnificent. I mean, that's not even getting into the star-making performance by Peter O'Toole. Great performance by Omar Sharif. Uh, just amazing photography and huge battle scenes. A, just a score that is I can't even be described. It is Steven Spielberg's favorite movie. It, it I mean, it's there's no good reason not to see Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, if you're gonna watch the Snyder Cut Justice League, I mean, it, Lawrence of Arabia is maybe a little shorter than that. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's shorter than that. But, but I mean, yes, it, it, it being a long movie is no excuse not to see Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, of course it should have won Best Picture. It's the single best movie of the entire decade. Uh, but I'd say my runner-up would be To Kill a Mockingbird. Anyhow, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. The good news is, is I'm getting further and further in these. I'm actually getting faster at it, so they're a little shorter with each one. Anyhow, only three more to go. Hope y'all enjoy it. Please like, share, comment, subscribe if you don't to. This is my little baby girl, Scarlett Jean. Say hello. No, we're not. I'm Jake Davis, and I'll catch you on the fly.